Hi everyone, my name is Lily Pierce. I'm a lay servant in the United Methodist Church. I graduated with an English degree from UNTG and I have a disability called Friedrich's ataxia that does affect my speech as you've likely already noticed. The topic that I'd like to talk to you about today is the spirit of the law versus the letter of the law in scripture and specifically today in the Gospels. I want to tell you that I did have some trouble getting this video ready to go because I was talking about a lot of things and something about it just didn't seem quite right. It wasn't quite clicking all together. And I realized that I was trying to talk about too many things at once. I have been reading scripture and pretty intensely studying it for about two and a half years now, and what I've realized the further that I go into that process is that a lot of themes and stories throughout scripture all connect with each other and sort of form a spider web, and it's hard for me to talk about one theme or one story and not have other themes or other stories that crop up in my mind. An example of some of the themes of the Bible that connect with one another are the theme I'm talking about today, spirit versus letter of the law. And then that sort of makes me think of the concept of legalism, which then leads me to concepts of humility and the first will be last and saved by grace versus saved by works. Then that leads me to thinking about how loving our neighbor is a verb and how faith without works is dead. If we don't actually help our neighbor, then what does it mean for us to say that we love our neighbor? And there's so many things that all relate to each other and themes that are similar and they sometimes overlap, but they are still different. So it it wasn't all driving together when I was first trying to do this video. So I've really reduced my focus and I hope that in doing so, this will be a little more clear and concise. Without further ado, Let's jump into the topic. What do I mean when I say the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law? So the letter of the law is what does a, a rule or a regulation or a law or a commandment technically say on a very literal surface level versus what is the context of it? Why was it implemented? How was it meant to be used? We know that even outside of Christianity in many other contexts, if you take something out of context and mean it in a way and use it in a way that it was not originally intended to be used, you can really distort what the original meaning of it was. It's really about understanding God's heart, not just his words. And Jesus, when he came and did his mission and ministry, he, number one, was extending salvation to all, not just to Hebrews, but to Gentiles, which basically means everyone who's not a Hebrew, but also he sort of was reiterating the spirit of the law in a lot of cases because the Hebrews over time had gotten so far from the spirit of the law and it focused so much on the letter that things were not being followed or being used in the way that they were meant to be. So I want to give you two examples of where this theme crops up in the Gospels. And bear in mind, these are not the only two instances where this comes up. It's just, as I said, I'm trying to be 
more clear and concise. One instance where we can see this is in the Good Samaritan parable. Now, if you are not familiar with this parable, I ask that you do a quick Google search and read up. But the point of the parable is to tell us to love our neighbor and even more specifically to tell us who is our neighbor? When Jesus is asked, well, who is my neighbor? He responds with this story in which the person who you at least expect to help a Hebrew is the one who helped him. And Jesus was illustrating the point that a neighbor is someone who shows mercy and generosity. When the person who asked him who is my neighbor, what they probably meant, what, or what they were probably thinking was that their neighbor would be someone who lived near them, or maybe expanding it a bit further, they probably thought fellow Hebrews were their neighbors, but then in Jesus' story, it's a Samaritan who helps the Hebrew, and Jesus is illustrating that when God said love your neighbor, he didn't mean it in just a literal way. A spiritual neighbor, as I said, someone who shows mercy and generosity. So that would be an instance where Jesus was trying to realign people with the spirit of the law, not just the letter. Here's another instance where we see this theme. In Mark chapter 2, Jesus sends his disciples to get food from a field on the Sabbath. And there was a law that had been given in the law of Moses. Do not work on the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath day holy. And if you actually flip back to Exodus and find the passage where God originally gives them this commandment, he says that it is a day to rest and be refreshed. And we look in the Bible and we see that the Sabbath is the day that people visited the synagogue and worshipped and prayed. You can see by looking at the context of the Sabbath and by thinking about that concept of being refreshed that it was a day to Get away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life and worrying about the things of this world and a day to sort of reset and maybe realign eyes with the eternal and realize that there's so much more than just our daily toil and the things that we worry so much about. When the, the Pharisees and the religious elites, they see Jesus' disciples getting food from a field on the Sabbath. And they asked Jesus, why are your disciples breaking this law? And Jesus' response is very interesting. He says that the Sabbath was made for mankind. Mankind was not made for the Sabbath. And he said that he is Lord of all, including the Sabbath. So really mulling over that, that first sentiment that the Sabbath was made for us. We weren't made for the Sabbath. It's kind of like saying that you weren't created to follow a set of rules. The rules and commandments and things were made for you to benefit you in some way. So considering that statement... And considering what I was saying about why the Sabbath was implemented, how it was a day to be close to God and get away from the daily toil, we see that if Jesus is enabling hungry people to get food on the Sabbath, that is not going against the spirit of the Sabbath. If we look at the letter of the law, 
maybe we see do not work on the Sabbath. When we look at the spirit of the law, we see that being refreshed is quite in line with relieving people of hunger. So once again, Jesus is reminding people it's not just about the letter of the law, it's about the spirit of the law. It's ironic, in a way, that many non-Christians, and even many Christians, do seem to believe that mankind was made for the law. That we follow a set of rules, and if we successfully follow those rules, we get a ticket to heaven in exchange. That is not the purpose of Christianity. The purpose is to be in relationship with God and to be following Jesus and living in the Spirit and trusting the Father and being sanctified as we walk through this life. When Jesus came, he reminds us to abide not just the letter of the law but also the spirit to follow not just god's literal commandments but also to pursue god's heart in the old testament in the books of the major prophets when basically all has gone to hell in a handbasket for the hebrews we see time and time again statements such as all of your sacrifices and offerings mean nothing if your heart is far from God. We see that our heart and our intentions and the context of these things matters more than just the literal words. So how do we draw near to God's heart and try to understand the spirit of the law. We practice our devotionals, we pray, we read scripture, we are involved with others in the body of Christ, worshiping with each other, studying with each other, and being in mission in our communities and trying to serve and love our neighbors. All of those things will help us Pursue God's heart and understand not just the letter of the law, but also the spirit of the law. The two greatest commandments, not just metaphorically, but quite literally, are to love God and love our neighbor. So as we do things that draw closer to God's heart, we will hopefully improve in our understanding of how we should live and how we should treat others. I'd like to explore this topic some more in the future. There are many instances where this theme comes up in scripture and in the gospels, and even many instances where God, where Jesus actually heals on the Sabbath, and those are even more interesting than the example of the disciples getting food on the Sabbath. So, I imagine that this will be a continuing series talking about this theme. I appreciate your time and attention, and I hope this was somewhat informative or interesting, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, and God bless you.